Many of us who play RuneScape today, be it old school RuneScape or RuneScape 3, started a long, long time ago. For us, it was once an experience like no other. The memories of running home from school to hop onto the family PC to play RuneScape are as heartwarming as those of a family vacation. The world sparked our imagination, the gameplay tested our dedication, and the community expanded our worldviews. However, as time went by in the game age, so did we. It became less magical, more streamlined and efficient, and less social. Like the outside world we were forced to grow and adapt into, RuneScape fell from the esteemed place it once had, and instead became nothing more than a part-time hobby, something to only play for a while. Some of us even logged off for the final time, never to return. Others did return, but only to see a list full of friends who forever would not. Now, 20 years after the initial release of the game, those of us still here play the game with a different kind of reverence. The game is still fun, but all of us long, at least in part, for it to become the experience we once had all those years ago. That was the experience we all shared when we celebrated equipping a runite weapon for the first time, when we slayed Elvarg the Dragon, or where we passed the fabled gates of Talvary, only to die to the dreaded White Wolf Mountain. That's the experience I seek to recreate through this series. I'll play Iron Man mode, and I'll be transported back in time to the very beginning. In order to progress forward in time, I'll have to experience all the content as it is released on a month-to-month -month basis. All content released in months beyond my current month will be inaccessible. This will force me to play the game as it would have been played, and as if I just logged in for the first time. I hope that that will expose some of those magic feelings that have been lost to this passage of time. Before we can begin, we'll have to go back. No, no, even further back. No, that's not even far enough. For some of us, 20 years ago may be too far to remember. For me, it's certainly pushing it. This was me. Too bad I was 10 years late with that mullet. At the time, Destiny's Child topped the Billboard Top 100, and Castaway was the top grossing movie. I can only remember some of what was going on, but I certainly remember that I wasn't playing RuneScape yet. Actually, I wouldn't discover the game for nearly five more years. But on January 4th, 2001, RuneScape went live, and some of us had our very first glance into the wonderful world of Gylenor, all hosted on a computer running in the Gowers family attic. On release, the game was tiny. The only region was Mistlin, including Lumbridge, Farrock, Barbarian Village, Draenor, and Edgeville. A few weeks later, Alcarid was released. The world map looked a bit like this, so this is the map I'll be restricted to for this first month. These are the only skills available to me at launch. There were also five requests released at launch, Cook's Assistant, Sheep Shearer, Demon Slayer, Shield of Arav, and Romeo and Juliet. Two quests were added shortly thereafter, Ernest the Chicken and Vampire Slayer. I'll have to complete all of these. Finally, I will need to obtain some of the best combat gear for the time, Adamant Armor and Sword. The year, there are some caveats to this part of the goal, but I'll go more into that in depth later. There's also a full video explanation of the rules for the game mode, as well as a Google Doc linked in the description if you're curious to see the full rules. Without further ado, let's get started. My name is Kuda Bear, and this is Time Traveler Iron Man. Alright, here we are. Welcome to Lumbridge in January of 2001. So before we really get started, I want to go over a couple exceptions I'm going to make right from the beginning of the account. Firstly, I'm not going to make any attempt to f abide by or follow RuneScape Classic Combat, which was pretty different than what we have now. I'm just going to use old school RuneScape Combat. Secondly, I actually will be obeying the restriction that RuneScape Classic had, and that RuneScape Classic had no ability to run. So I won't be running until I reach the RuneScape 2 beta release. Finally, when you would originally create an account on RuneScape Classic, you'd get to pick a class. I'm going to go with the default adventure class that everyone wound up getting shortly after that system was removed, which would have given me a couple of starting items and stats that I'm going to mostly ignore. I'm just going to drop most of my stuff from Tutorial Island instead. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So of course the very first quest that we've got to do after starting our account is Cook's Assistant. It's the very first quest that so many people have done 
upon first starting RuneScape, and it'll be no exception here. It's very unclear how the spawns for items changed, and more generally speaking, small changes to the map as the game progressed from classic to this point. So as long as the item exists, and it seems like a place that I would been, have been able to access regardless, I'm going to be able to use that. For example, the pot existed from the beginning of the game, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that pot, even though I don't know if that spawn actually existed. It would be really hard to figure it out. Similarly, I'm going to grab this bucket down here. However, if it's a very convenient and obvious addition, such as the bank on top of the castle here, I'm not going to use it until it was actually released. So of course, the first thing we have to do is go ahead and milk the dairy cow here, grabbing an egg from the chicken pen here, and we drop the flour in the hopper here in the windmill. All right, Mr. Cook, I've got all your ingredients right here. Pot of flour, fresh egg, and bucket of milk. But do I get to go to the party? Not for over five years. There we go, cooked assistant quest complete, 300 cooking experience, first levels on the account, up to four cooking from that. Now, experience rewards from quests have changed a lot from Classic. Obviously, I don't have any control over that. Normally in Classic, the experience reward you would get from a quest like this would scale with your level. However, in RuneScape uh, 2, it is just capped at whatever the quest rewards. It's a fixed amount. Next quests on the list. Restless Ghost. So effectively what's going on in this quest is there is a ghost who is haunting this church's cemetery here. However, if I were to try to just talk to the ghost straight up, I don't speak ghost. So in order to figure out how to speak with the ghost, I need to talk to Father Ernie here to go ahead and get the ghost speak amulet. Of course, the amulet of ghost speak is one of the most iconic items of the entire history of RuneScape as it comes into play in so many future quests. It turns out that his skull was actually stolen from the coffin by a warlock, I guess. The skull exists on an altar down here in the basement of the tower for some reason. It causes the skeleton to come to light. Nice and easy here, just go ahead and slap that skull onto that body in the coffin there and that re releases the ghost, I guess. So he's on to the spirit world, even though lots of ghosts are still stuck here in the RuneScape world, so I don't really understand how this works. But that actually concludes the quest, which has a nice prayer experience reward tied to it. So prayer actually did exist upon the release of the game on January 4th, 2001. However, it had zero use when it was first released. So even though I unlocked all these prayers, I cannot use them at all. Next on the list is coming over to Farmer Fred here who has got a simple job for us to collect, I believe it's 20 balls of wool. Doing this quest now is actually quite important because I don't actually have access to a bank. I'm effectively bound as an ultimate Iron Man until the bank was released in June of 2001. Technically, the bank did exist uh, at release. However, it could only store coins and there was only one location in Varrock. So if I want to store my coins in Varrock, I can do that. However, all items and stuff have to stay in my inventory, which, you know, effectively makes me an ultimate Iron Man. Here's another little inconsistency that all have to happen. Sheep Shearer was actually released on the day the game was released. However, there was no crafting skill. So this action here is not supposed to give me any crafting experience, but I obviously can't prevent that. So I'm going to go ahead and get the crafting experience anyway. So simple as that, going ahead and turning in the balls of wool. The crafting experience obviously not useful here, but the coins are much needed. That's the first coins I've gotten. Next on the list is Romeo and Juliet, pretty much the quest you would expect if you're familiar with the Shakespearean play. The twist here being that instead of a tragedy, it's actually just Romeo being entirely aloof of what's going on and it doesn't quite result in the same result as the play. It's a little bit more ridiculous than that. Go ahead and take a stop south of Varrock here to pick some Kadava Berries. The Apothecary can make me the Kadava Berry Potion as requested, which is pretty straightforward. Just need to give him the Kadava Berries. Similar to the original Romeo and Juliet results in Romeo thinking she's actually dead, but instead of killing himself, he goes ahead and runs off with her cousin. So that's, uh, I guess, tragic for Juliet. And that's the end of the quest. No reward except for the quest points, but the quest points are pretty useful. Next up of the quest release on release day is the Shield of Arav. Searching one of the bookcases here, I find the Shield of Arav, which is the book uh, detailing what exactly the shield is. Talking to Roldo, he tells me about rumors about one of the gangs that might be holding on to the shield, or at least part of it. So the fur trader here in the market wants 20 gold coins to give me information on the Phoenix Gang. So it's a good thing I got that coin reward from the sheep share quest earlier. The Phoenix Gang wants me to commit a murder in order to join, and I'm just totally cool with that, so I'm gonna go kick some ass.
Unfortunately, that doesn't mean my hardcore Iron Man journey goes very far at all, but that's okay. It was never really the focus of this series anyway, so I guess I'll just be a normal Iron Man. Alright, Mr. Johnny, let's try again. This time I got beer. Go ahead and turn in the intelligence report here at the Phoenix Gang, and I only had to die to make it happen, so that's cool. Within the weapon storeroom here is actually an iron dagger, which I'll go ahead and take. And here, deep within the Phoenix Gang hideout, is a chest containing no other than half of the shield of Arav. So I could just give the weapon store key to my partner here, who is definitely not me in another account. Now with my half of the shield, I'll just go ahead and turn it in here and get two copies of half of the certificate of the reward for turning in the shield and put the two together. And boom, we have a completed reward certificate, which I can then take to the key and go ahead and turn it in and get the reward. Which, uh, you know, if you just cleaned up the crime in your city, you wouldn't have all these shields lost and broken into pieces and have to put out the rewards and stuff. So the very next quest on our list is Demon Slayer. However, I don't want to try to attempt it with this low of stats. So I'm going to go ahead and get my stats up a little bit now. And part of that is going to be to buy the Steel Scimitar here. Of course, spending the 10 GP to open the toll gate here. Prince Ally Rescue was not released for a little bit yet. For my training, I'm actually just going to be killing chickens for a while. I could kill goblins and maybe get a little bit of gold, but ultimately I think it'll be a lot faster for me to kill chickens for now. I can also bury the bones. Again, I can gain experience in prayer. It just provides me no benefit this month, though in the future it will be. So let's go ahead and cook these chickens on this fire in this house here. But I wanted to take this opportunity to call out a very interesting thing that I have to deal with, and that's that fishing doesn't exist for quite a while. So the main source of food I have is either by killing animals and cooking their meat like this, which isn't really good, or by baking bread. <laughs> and that's the best food I can get is bread. And it'll take me a long time to get because I'm capped on inventory space as an ultimate Iron Man would be. In a couple months, there will be better things to bake as well as bread. But until then, bread is the best food I can make. All right, there's five attack. Now I can go ahead and use the scimitar that I got. And I just thought to look up, feathers actually did not exist until June, so I can't actually collect these for later. Oh well. All right, done killing chickens for now. Stopped at 14 strength, which is actually a pretty relevant level, as it allows me to hit threes when I'm using the steel scimitar on a accurate or a defensive. So that's a pretty good place to stop. It also allows me to hit threes with silver light, though. Against Delirith, he's only got 10 HP. It doesn't super matter, but the attack and strength levels in general will come in handy. Let's go ahead and do the Demon Slayer quest. I also went ahead and dropped the bronze axe and the tinderbox. Fire making and woodcutting is actually not really useful this early in the game. You would pretty much just use it for cooking meat, but I can do that on fireplaces anyway, and I can't bake anything on the fires, so I'll get them back later when I need them. They're really cheap. So the basic sense of this quest is there's a demon that attacked Barak. There is a group of dark wizards who's trying to resurrect the demon, and I need to stop them and kill the demon once again. And you do that with the magical sword Silverlight and the right incantation, which I just took a screenshot of. Silverlight is actually owned by this guy, Surprisin. Get it? Surprising? But he's got it locked in the case here, and he lost the keys. One key is with this Captain Robin fellow, Captain of the Verak Guard. The second key, surprising, actually dropped down this drain, so we have to go ahead and flush it down and then fetch it from the sewers. The third key is possessed by Wizard Triborn here, and I just have to give him 25 corpses of deceased chickens. So on my way back to Verak, just took a quick detour here to the uh, kebab shop in... Alcarid. I actually think this is going to be my best source of food, uh, better than baking bread at least, because these have a chance to heal much more, though they also have a chance to heal nothing at all, so this will be interesting. But this shop was actually released at the end of this month with the release of Alcarid, which is pretty nice, because I'll be taking advantage of this food shop a lot. Chatting with Surprising again, all three keys in my inventory means that he'll pop over here for some reason, instead of just walking and I can get the silver light, which is amazing. So the demon itself isn't actually going to be a problem. It's going to be his uh, dark wizard allies, because they're going to try to aggro on me, and I'm not going to be able to, oh, click out of there real quick. I'm not going to be able to attack him. So I'm going to have to try to find a way to get away from the dark wizards and not get killed by them, so I can aggro the demon. This should be it. He walked all the way outside. Nice, I'm in combat with him now. So it should be pretty straightforward from here. Just need one more hit. He has so little HP, I just can't do any damage. 
a good amount of food left, though. I should be okay. There he goes. All right, what's that incantation? Let me pull it up. There we go. He's sucked back into the vortex. Banished once more. Never to be summoned again, or probably to be summoned again. I don't know. But after that happens, it's just end of quest. Drop you in the middle of this deadly circle of cult people <laughs> and they proceed to kill you and I don't need this for a long time so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it on the ground you know famous powerful sword weaker than a seal scimitar on to the next quest and actually the final two quests for this month take place here at the haunted Draenor Manor the first one being Ernest the Chicken it turns out there is a mad scientist here that controls this equipment and uh, knows how to turn him back just need to find the pieces of equipment that got lost. I think they were stolen by imps or something. First off, we'll need to grab this fish food from the storage here, and then also this poison here from the kitchen. On our way out of the house, I'll go ahead and grab this spade and also this bronze medium helmet, which is actually an upgrade because I didn't have any helmet before. Just outside, there is a fountain here that is full of carnivorous piranhas. So <laughs> they bite you if you try to go in there. So all I just need to do is poison the fish food, kill the fish, and after they die, I can go search the fountain again and get the pressure gauge from inside. Don't call PETA. If I come over here with the spade and check the compost heap, simple as that, I can find a key. Back inside the mansion, I can use this key to actually open this closet behind the staircase. And inside here is the rubber tube that is missing from the machine, and also a scary skeleton who's trying to kill me. On the west side of the mansion, there's actually a hidden lever here on the bookcase, which allows us to open it and head down to a secret basement. And within the basement, there's actually a lever puzzle, which is really interesting. And actually, there's a funny story behind this. I remember this quest was the first quest that allowed me to learn how to look up RuneScape walkthroughs, because I don't even know if I know how to do this without a walkthrough even today. <laughs> After solving the lever puzzle, though, you can enter this final room and grab the oil can, which is the third and missing, left final missing component of the machine. Talking to Professor Arenstein, I can give him all of the equipment back, and telepathically through the wall, he fixes the machine, which allows Ernest to be turned back into a human, and completes the quest, which is 300 coins worth of reward. It's pretty good. The final quest that was released at the very end of January 2001 is actually Vampire Slayer. Another quest to go slay a monster, a horrible monster, this time a vampire located within Draenor Manor. Been terrorizing the citizens of Draenor Village. Upstairs, though, there is some garlic, which actually does benefit us in this upcoming fight. So we go all the way up to Varrock to speak with Dr. Harlow, the vampire slayer of Yore, who's unfortunately had uh, better days, but all he needs is a beer, and he'll let us know exactly how we can kill this vampire that's terrorizing these poor people in this town and apparently all we needed to know was we needed a wooden stake and a hammer a quick stop at the Varak general store for a hammer to go with the stake of course one more brief stop over here in Alcard to go ahead and restock up on food so I actually don't know how this is going to go I'm not very strong <laughs> I do have a full inventory of food so we'll see if we can make it happen this is the ultimate boss fight of 2001 January. Count Draenor, level 34. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. Unfortunately, it's regenerating too fast for me. I'm not gonna be able to out DPS it. I could flinch it. I think in this corner you can flinch it. It's just. It's not something I want to do because it's not something that you could do in RuneScape Classic. I think I'm just going to have to get stronger to be able to take him down. So for now, back to the chickens. So this will actually go ahead and conclude the very first episode of Time Traveler Iron Man. Next time, we're going to work towards completing Vampire Slayer, the very last quest release this month, and then work on acquiring our best-in-slot gear. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the journey so far, and I hope you'll return for the future months we progress into. Take care everyone and we'll see you next time.